live from their studio in South Florida, Twist Gaming. Featuring lead broadcaster, Matt Koza. Co-host and creative genius, Josh Perry. Co-host and interviewer extraordinaire, Anne Lazito. Co-host and marketing mogul, Aaron Murphy. With appearances from special guest, Lucy. Welcome to Twist Gaming, where you get to play board games with us. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. This is Twist Gaming. As usual, I'm Matt. I'm Ann. I'm Josh. And this is our first impression session of our Spotlight Stream, where we talk about our favorite aspects of the game we just played, any constructive criticisms we might have, and the most important question of the evening of would we play it again? And tonight we had the pl privilege. Pleasure. Privilege and pleasure. Thank you, Anne. You're welcome. Of showing off Dice Throne Adventures, currently live on Kickstarter right now. Josh is going to put that link in chat for all of you that are watching now and on video on demand. Uh, and first and foremost, we would like to thank Dice Throne Adventures for sponsoring this stream and all of this week's streams here at Twist Gaming. Uh, so quick recap, and for those of you that maybe didn't get a chance to watch the spotlight, go back and watch it if you didn't. Because honestly... A lot of fun. Yeah. I think we had some pretty awesome interaction as well, so I was super stoked about that. Yeah. But, Josh, what kind of game is Dice Throne Adventures? It's a cooperative... I want to kind of almost say it's like a dungeon crawl because you're kind of going through these portals and kind of looking for a, the the big boss to fight. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a campaign game. Uh, I, I think it goes over f four, four levels? So yes, four levels. And then for those of you that are familiar with Dice Throne... Uh, the head-to-head -head variant. This is a yep. cooperative variant of that. So you're working together to beat up the big baddie. And the original Dice Throne, you and Josh played on an earlier Gauntlet stream, right? That is correct. And I beat Josh every single no. time. So mm -hmm. make sure you check out the Gauntlet streams to figure to see some live playthrough of that version of the game. And see how much bad is lying. Yeah. <laughs> so first up, uh, we talk about our favorite aspects of the game. Anything that really jumped off the table to us. Anything that made us really enjoy the session. Uh, and I'm going to start on the middle of the table <laughs> with Ann. You're trying to be sneaky and look at Josh. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I really enjoyed this game. This was right up my alley. Uh, the game had a little bit of combat against the enemies. I do like co-op games. There's a story to it. I like deck builders. I like the ability to upgrade my characters. So that was really cool. Uh, I... <laughs> That's not how numbers work. Yeah, it is. I, I love you, Cho, but... <laughs> um, Matt's negative 10. No. That, that's how bad Matt is. He's negative 10%. You were out wandering out in the middle of nowhere. Keep Matt it on was track. The one Keep me. it on track. I really enjoyed... Uh, so one of the things that Manny, is one of the designers of the game, brought to our attention was that after Dice, Thro uh, Dice Throne had done their original Kickstarter, they had ended up collaborating with Roxley, and they were able to really upgrade a lot of the components in their games. Mm -hmm. And I just think that that really brings a lot of table presence. And for somebody like me, who has a rough time organizing my thoughts and things like this, um, this player board uh, is so very helpful. I mean, your, your player powers are clearly labeled. It has sufficient amount of information, and it's not... The way that this player board is designed is it's pretty on the table. It looks like it's meant to be here. Yeah. Quick reference guides are great and fantastic. They're absolutely... Could you please put this in the green screen for me? Sure. They're f uh, great and fantastic. I absolutely love them, and they help me find information quickly. However, when you have just the card with the text, it's not as an attractive reminder as something like this player board yeah and they did a really good job with the art and everything on it i mean the components themselves are really great it's good graphic it design up. and good art great you are i mean and it closes up nicely like a little book like i didn't know what it was at first the player boards are so clear and everything is so smooth as it runs mm -hmm. it really truly is uh so for our spotlight sessions we intentionally come to this game with three varying levels of familiarity with the game matt and josh are obviously much more familiar with this game and the series than i am i'd never played this game before i've n and dice throne adventures is the cooperative expansion not standalone but just expansion to the game and what Manny had mentioned was on the uh, Dice Throne Adventures rulebook was if you want to know how to play this game, go back and play the co-op one. So I, to give you one. context, yeah, the competitive. So w to give you context, I haven't played any of it, and I was kind of gotten thrown into the deep end. And while we had Manny there, the information throughout the game 
is so <coughs> laid out so well, I didn't off I didn't often get lost. Well, that was one comment that I actually saw in chat during the actual playthrough was that someone said, "Oh, turn two, and Anne's already an expert <laughs> because you were doing some serious stuff on turn two yeah. already, and turn two that you've ever played." Yeah. So that's that's pretty impressive, and the fact that you're able to pick that up quickly, while not feeling that the game was too simplistic either. No, like we were ragging, we were ragging on you two, and I was I was loving it. Um, like Anne's Anne's got the body count, but it feels good to come to the table as a newbie, and feel like especially in a co-op game that you're making a significant contribution to the mission. Uh, one of the cool things with the characters is if you look on your little secondary sheet. Yep. Uh, there's a complexity for each character. I did think that was so, super helpful. So one of the things that I'm trying to make out was we gave you one of the least... Co they're not that they're worse characters. It's just they have less moving components to make them understand them better. So, What um, is your complexity on yours anyways? Two. Okay, so mine's a three. So I'm right there with you in terms of complexity. I think yeah. yours is probably much more... And mine's a five. Yeah. Um, but <clears throat> like that also lets... I'm kind of stealing. I don't know if you're done. No, good. Uh, Depending on your player style, what kind of character you want to play, there's a whole yeah. different vast of things of different play styles and stuff like that. So, like, I played the Shadow Thief in our Gauntlet stream. Yeah. I had fun as hell with the Shadow Thief. The Shadow Thief was awesome. Though, I think the Barbarian was pretty cool, too, when I played him. It's been a while since I've played. Uh, but, no, that was our Gauntlet stream. We had a lot of fun. But it, it was uh, – as we started to get into it, I started remembering how to play him and stuff like that. And and the cool little synergies he has. Um mm -hmm. So, I, yeah, no, that was really... Yes, I saw a comment in chat just now, actually, and on these sheets, they also have character-specific frequently asked questions, which is friggin' awesome. Yeah. I mean, these character quick reference sheets are fantastic. It gives you a breakdown of the individual character components, frequently asked questions, then you've got lore and bio here, uh, then you've got your individual character tokens that you're using, the breakdown and statistics of the dice that you have for your character, and it's it's just awesome the way that it was laid out. And I think everything was very intuitive, even down to you're talking about the player boards before. And you have your abilities laid out. And I'm going to try to sneak it into the, the, the camera here. And I think it's pretty straightforward that that's the size of a card. And when you're drawing cards, you're like, this is where this goes. Right. I didn't need to read that in the rules. Like, no. I've played this before. But the first time, I didn't have to read it in the rules. So it's intuitive. And they did a very great job of making it feel making the things feel like they were supposed to be there. I want to add in, you played Hero of the Night earlier today to go and get us dinner while we set <laughs> up the stream. Yes. So you, I'm not sure, I'm sure maybe previously you had the opportunity to, but maybe not tonight, get to see that the player sets, how they come. Uh, I don't believe we had the game trays with the we, other one, did we? We had it when we played, uh, we played two of the season, two characters. We played the... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, you had the Huntress or yeah. the, the, the jungle... And well, you, the, had, the tiger. you had the uh, general, dude. Yeah. So the game tray is um, everything that you need for your player in and the more. box. And it all fits so nicely. And it's, it really is, you know, pop off the plastic piece. And you're good to go. And you're good to go. Yeah. I, I thought that this was the coolest part. And you well, it makes it nice for not having to take up a whole lot of real estate on the table. Granted, we've got this big table in front of us where we're taking up a lot of table space, right. but you don't need to. We sprawled out because of convenience. And Manny made the good point. We were talking about the board uh, for the Kickstarter, and he was saying how they will have a tray for the moving... Uh, mm -hmm. There's a word for that, a, a fancy word for that, but whatever. The um, tiles for the world. Yeah. So everything will... And he said that it's about the size of what, the Season 2 he box? He said there's a tray for the minions and everything. So like all the yeah. card decks we had it would all be in a... A compact tray. In an organized the board would spot, still be yeah. on the table. It okay. Were, the the moving board would be still on the table, but all the components you're grabbing for would all be in a compact tray. And we are the kind of gamers where we go back to the Ziploc method, and you have all of your tackle boxes to keep everything in place. And you know, at the end of the game, you're buying cards to upgrade your deck for the next adventure. Yeah. This makes it so nice, convenient, and it, and it's it looks nice. I feel like it just looks. Yeah, it looks very cleaner. Polished. Uh, one of the other things that, I mean, going back to my personal preferences all around, I'm a huge sucker for individual player power. So obviously I yeah. love playing as the individual characters and having a wide array of characters. That's another thing that Manny was speaking about before is that uh, these characters are spawned from various different times as well as places within this universe, which is why you have the Wild West characters, the 
the samurai Japanese characters. You've got even like sci uh, fantasy. I don't Shadow know. Thieves. Yeah, whatever you are. Uh, Whoever you are. Yeah, I'm just saying you you've are. got more modern things. You've got more fantasy things. You've got more realistic things. So it's very cool to see that as well. Absolutely. Um, the other thing that I really enjoy is that, yes, it uses you know the Yahtzee mechanic of roll, keep what you roll, you know, re-roll. But it's not just oh, I'm trying to get the highest number on my dice. Right. Granted, yes, if you roll all sixes, you get your ultimate ability. So that's that's an obvious boon there. But it never feels like you're stuck. I think there was only one turn where throughout this entire game that we did where I rolled and I was unable to do something. Yeah, yeah. And I think you weren't even in that predicament no. ever. So um, I don't I don't remember if you were, Josh. I, I always had, like, something, but it was, like, gain CP and it was at max CP. And yeah, was like... but at, at the same time, though, you're always getting something. Yeah. So it never feels like you're completely wasting a turn, which is the problem that I have with some of these dice rolling games. Without it not feeling challenging. So I feel like that's a rough balance to strike where mm -hmm. you're always getting something every – you're always able to do something every turn. But isn't it enough? Right. Like yeah. or you lose – sometimes you lose the challenge when you can do something every turn. Mm -hmm. So I, I had a great time with it in the fact yeah. that I never felt like I was, you know, stuck on anything. And I like the fact that we can kind of split the party and go on our own separate ways and let Josh hunt for his own loot while we go and tackle the actual bad guys. Yeah. Uh, Josh, is there anything else that you wanted to say? Um, the art's amazing. That's some, like, like it wasn't, it's just, it's just that good. Like the art's amazing talk about it. and Manny does it. Yeah. And Manny does it all. Um, Blows my mind. There. I'm going to step on your toes here because yeah. I saw a comment in chat that I really like and someone saying that you could always whiff on your turn, but then you could also hit on your defense, which is really good. So on the occasions that there's the undefendable damage, whatever, but if you roll on your defense, like my character has a chance to prevent damage as well as deal damage on their turn. Mine does as well. And so it's it's cool in that you can still actually hit when you're defending yourself. So even then, even when you're getting beat up, you still get the last glimmer of hope of, I'm just going to scratch you a little bit and take you out. Uh, some of the cool things is, when so that boss tile? Yeah. I didn't know a boss we were going to fight. There's So we have a third of the game. Okay. Yeah. Just a third. Yeah. The, there's more tiles. There's yep. more monsters. There's more everything. We just got a third. We have two of the bosses. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we could have fought that, or we could have fought the barbarian, dude. Right. Um, you wanna... But it's a, just a random tile that you kind of mix in, and you shuffle it out. Um, Explosive Rage. That's, I mean, it's the guy right behind Dan. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's, that's also cool. The other cool thing is on the Kickstarter, there's an option to pledge and you get minis. Oh, that's awesome. For everything. And it's an optional thing, which is cool. So if you don't, if you're not a minis person, like, that's you don't... good, though, because then if you're not a minis person, you could save on the, the cost of the yeah. game. Um, but no, art that, uh, yeah, the, I had a lot of fun when we did the Gauntlet of Dice Throne. And then this, if, if you guys don't know, you're new to the stream, Matt and I. Are huge co-op guys. Yeah, yeah. We, we I mean, do. and is too. But like, we 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 particularly <laughs> seek out co-op games and we play them very often. So we've gotten good at them, and I felt like this one had, had a fair amount of challenge to yeah. it. It had a good challenge, and uh, no, I would, I would like to play more. That's uh, not the question we're on yet. I know. I just. I want to play more now. <laughs> no, I'm uh, going to everyone wants to sleep now. Uh, that. No, but so going into the. I'm sorry. Did you have any of any other positives? All right, so going into the second question here, which is if, you know, given that this is your first time playing this game particularly, yeah. is there anything that you would change or tweak given the opportunity? And I'm going to start that with Josh. The one thing, and this is super, like, since th we have a prototype, I have a copy of the prototype rules. I think the rules need a little work, but the rules that I got wasn't even done. There were still images missing and stuff like that. So Great. I can't. Big that's a super of grain of salt. Yeah. I'm sure they'll be fine when they go to print. There was some um, unclear things. I was I was glad that Manny there just kind of help us walk us through a couple things, but I'm sure that will be fine when it goes to print. Um, because the copy I got was completely yeah. Here's the current rule set, and then there was like insert image here and insert this here and the whole thing. Yeah, so. we got a lot of placement uh, images in yeah. in the loot cards as well. But um, that's. Like, my only big thing is, like, organization, which they're all going to fix with the trays and stuff. I just, like, I have, feel like I have a... It's, it's the Pile of tokens. Yeah. yeah. And it's... 
yeah, I, I really don't have anything to add to say about this game. And? Um, I really enjoyed this game a lot. <laughs> I <laughs> this is not the right answer for that question. There's a lot of lore apparently. And Manny says he's been working a lot on the lore in the background. It was great to hear the lore from him. I would have liked to see the lore integrated more into the actual game. I know there's a not a lot of space, and I know we have like a little bit of lore on the back, but I y don't. You're struggling to find a negative. Well, I don't think that I, I I would if you're gonna I think if it's supposed to be a story that I would have liked is like the backstory, the lore, the hidden lore was that like my gunslinger character was the mentee of the fallen gunslinger, and if we didn't have Manny here, I'd never know that, and I don't think there's any way to just from the components that we have, I don't think that there. I, I'm curious if there is a way to know. There's a slight bio paragraph on the back of the sheet. That, that's the most lore I've seen. Uh, the rule I don't know if this rule book does, but the main rule book does have a little bit of lore in it. Right. So it's just the pair. But like I said, it doesn't. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I don't know how much lore is here. So like, so someone in chat saying that he's done two comics. I'm assuming to tie into the world. So it's it's a separate tie-in. But no, I agree. It's seen some more. I think the comics are great, and if you have enough content to make a comic separate, I think that I'm not saying that the lore isn't there or that the lore isn't great. But if I'm just picking up Dice Throne Adventures. I want to be able to know the lore and enjoyed carry. I want to be able to know the lore just from my box. You know what I'm saying? Like, or at least have basic lore and then be like, oh man, you know, make it two, two way street. I'm so into this story, maybe not the game so much, but I'm so into the story. I want to know more about the story. I want to go out and get the comics, but I want to be able to enjoy the story while I'm playing the game two. Matt, do you have the level one card over there? Yes. Um, we want to attach Manny's brain yeah. to every box. He has such a great so world. That, uh, I, I think that's great. Put that in card game. I, I think this would be a good spot to kind of put story in is Why? each level. Like this is how you go to each step in the game. If, it, if there was some story around all right, you guys are in this world. What's happening? Yada, yada. A little story. Not, not a lot. But that might be a good place to kind of put it because that's where your setup is and that's where your conclusion is. Maybe I mean that's a small card, I, though I would like it on the back of the player board. I would like it on the back of the boss board. Yeah. You have a lot of space on the back of this of this player board. You're already doing double side print. It would be cool to have, and that way for people like me who want the story, it's there and it's pretty and it's cool. And for the people who are just into the game, yeah, they also it's have, not in the way. They have the side card too, so they can do it on the back like they did on the players. They're double sided, the same thing on each side right now. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. But that'd be something cool to see. No. I think my only constructive criticism, and I don't know if it's the actual uh, bad guys that we fought, I feel like I didn't have a very, very much opportunity to use my defense. And not for lack of getting attacked, I feel like oh, a lot yeah. of the damage that I got was undefendable damage or direct damage. Um, I it might have just been the luck of the draw of the cards that we had picked. So grain of salt. This is the first time that we played it, so that it could be that we didn't see the cards properly. So moving on to the most important question of the evening, and that is, would you play this game again, Josh? I think I already know your answer. Oh yeah, let's play now. <laughs> uh, I'm looking here. Every monster we didn't fight, th it's all straight damage. We got, we 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 pulled all the undefendable, all defendable. Uh, yeah. So that was that was the luck of the draw, and then the obviously the when you're playing the first time, yeah, the minions you ran against were unpen undefendable heavy. There are more. They are terrifying. <laughs> yes, play now. And definitely, and I would like to, I would like to see more characters. I'd like to play more characters. Yeah. And absolutely. I'd like to take my gunslinger now with the updated loot deck and run through the next one. Yeah, I I had a ton of fun with this. Definitely want to play again when this when you know it actually gets fully released and we have more than a third of the game. I'd love to potentially do a Twitch plays campaign of this. That would be interesting. So guys, stay tuned for more possibly <laughs> a little you know a little Thoughts? dangle the carrot there. Uh, but other than that, that's three resounding yeses. We would play this again. I think this is one of our favorite games that we've spotlighted, if I had to go out on a limb here. You know what's really cool, too, that I was thinking about? I would definitely play this with the kids. Yeah. I, yeah. Don't, think, I don't think that this 
That would be awesome. I don't think that this is too complicated. Michael, maybe not David. I think this would might go over David's head. But the fact that it's roll the dice and match the icons, like, Puzzling. lends itself to being more open than just an adult game. I think Michael's 16, but I think, like, even a little younger might be able to pick I up on that. David could play, especially if you gave him one of the low complexity characters. Yeah. And you were managing a lot of the status effects and stuff, I, I think. But I don't know if he'd be able to play independently. Uh, independently, I don't know. Yeah. All righty. So thank you all for joining us this evening. This is going to conclude our presentation of our first impression session of our spotlight for Dice Run Adventures, currently live on Kickstarter now. If you, Josh, if you could throw that link one more time into chat. For everyone watching on video on demand, make sure that you go back and watch uh, the spotlight stream if you haven't had a chance to look at that itself. It was a ton of fun, and we very much enjoyed this. Big shout out again to Dice Throne Adventures for sponsoring this stream and all of this week's streams. If you're watching elsewhere, remember, please follow us on Facebook, Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, or ch come chat with us in our Discord channel. Where? Sometimes. Yeah, I forget what she's going to say. We meet you at high noon. And sometimes the other parts of the day. So with that, though, this is going to be Twist Gaming signing off. I'm Matt. I'm Ian. I'm Josh. Have a good night, everyone, and thanks again for stopping by.